amazing thing. The 12-foot wall, the start of the obstacle course, you can see just how far up it is to the top. If you recall in the preliminary competition, but a lot of people who couldn't make it, in particular Dallas Cowboys who chose to accept that penalty, make a try, take their two-second penalty and go around it. There have been those among our world champions who have considered the same thing. They have doctored it just a little bit. They've put some rosin on it, and they've used a little sandpaper to try to make it a little rougher so that their feet will stick to it. But if you've ever tried to attack a 12-foot wall with just a rope and your own body, you think you'll find it's not easy. The man who has done it himself many times, sometimes more successful than others, is this big horse, Reggie Jackson. Now, Reg, it seems to me here in Hawaii we have had more trouble with the wall than we have ever seen at Rotunda. And it looks higher here in Hawaii to me. It does, Keith. Uh, the main problem to me is that a lot of guys do not attack the wall correctly. The most important thing, and I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but believe me, I'm very happy that I don't have to do it down here with these guys. But the thing to do is to come to the wall and try to jump up it as high as you possibly can with one foot. Feet up, your first foot up as high up as you can. As high as you possibly can and to stay away from the wall. To stay away from the wall like this. Mm -hmm. And then try to climb up and walk up the wall. If you come too close to the wall and try to pull, your, pull yourself up by your arms, right. then it's all on your arms. It right. takes a heck of a lot of strength and a lot of time. So we've got to try and attack the wall, push off, and then try to walk up it as best right. you can. As best you can as best you can, because it is an equalizer. <laughs> and it reaches way up in the blue sky. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, for the Pittsburgh the Steelers leading off now, it's going to be Franco Harris in the first run. Number 32 for the Steelers, 26 years of age, 6'2", 240 pounds, the graduate of Penn State University. Three times in four seasons of the NFL, he's gained more than 1,000 yards. 1,246 yards in 1975 for an average just under five yards per carry. Ten touchdowns, the Super Bowl MVP a year ago when he ran for 158 yards against Minnesota. 1972 AFC Rookie of the Year. One of the most popular Steelers. And except for injury, he might well have gained more than 1,000 yards in four successive seasons. Quick, agile, smart, strong. Watch this effort right here. Watch the power, the balance of the man. And with it, those plain old-fashioned guts, because you take punishment when you run inside, like this. Franco Harris. Not uncommon to carry it 30 times in a ball game. On third and one, everybody in the ballpark knows who's going to be the man. Reggie asked him how he felt about this kind of work. Well, Reggie, tell the truth, I kind of love it. It's, uh, it's a really big challenge, and I always think I'm going to make it. I always know I'm going to make it. Uh, I think I have the kind of ability that if I have to get to one yard by going over somebody, I will. If I, if I have to feel that I need some speed, I think I got it. Or if I have to make a cut, I think I, think I can do that, too. So... Uh, in, cru in crucial situations, I love to play ball because I, I think I'm, I'm a pressure ball player, and uh, you know, and, and like when it really counts and when it's going for everything, uh, I have a lot of confidence in myself. And I think as of lately, uh, I, I I think that the Pittsburgh Steelers have shown they have a lot of confidence in me too, because in a lot of situations, you know, like they would turn to me and in, in those sort of things. So it's you know, it's something that just has built up and. Uh, you know, like just that competitive spirit that I'm, you know, just going to get the most as I can in any given situation. So Franco leads off on the obstacle course for the Steelers. And running for Cincinnati on the first leg will be outfielder Merv Rettman. Total of six runners, and it's cumulative time. Rettman on the wall. He's over the top, and Franco is spinning. Can't reach the top. Now he struggles over. In the meantime, Merv Rettman is gone. Flying. Look at the quickness he's showing going through those tires right there. And he's got a lead on Franco that Franco just may not be able to catch up on. No mistakes, up over the high jump bar, a nice flip. Franco again, over the water jump, over the high jump bar, no mistakes. And here come Rittman bringing it on home. Franco, you got to stay tough. You don't want to get too far behind and lose up some ground. 26-2-3 for Merv Rettman. What well, a heck of an effort. After two or three days out here, they all get difficult. What do you think, Pete? That's some run. Oh. Oh. That's about it. I'm going back and land the beach the rest of the day. <laughs>
For Franco Harris, 29-8-0. For Captain Andy Russell, a problem. Andy, what's the problem here? A uh, little discrepancy in the wall? Well, we're not sure, uh, Reggie. It appears to me that the yellow wall is slicker than the red wall. Uh, I noticed that the reds warmed up on this. They were having difficulty. They slipped off. They chose the red wall. Our suggestion is, why not rotate the walls that it equalizes the competition? It throws out any possibility that one wall is slicker than the other. Well, let's go back now to the start of this first run. You see Murr Bretman hit the wall. Stick to it. Franco, in the meantime, is over there spinning his wheels. Literally had to arm his way up over the top, and that is the hard way, not to mention the fact it is the slow way to do it. But give him credit for sticking with it and getting over it. Here we go with match number two. Big John Cole with the Pittsburgh Steelers, 6'3", 260. Ken Griffey, the fastest Cincinnati race. And he does not get over the world before John Cole does. Very agile big man, 6'3", 260. Look at him get up on the monkey bars and go through it, Keith. Griffey drops off just a half a step ahead of him. They work their way through the tires. So far, we have not had any mistakes by anybody. And now Griffey, with that speed, beginning to put him away as he comes to the tape. And it's a great run for Ken Griffey. 27.70 seconds for Kenny. 29.24 for John Kolb. The total time for the Cincinnati Reds now, 53.93, and for the Steelers, 59.04, so it's almost a six-second lead for the Cincinnati Reds after two runs. And so far, we have had no mistakes on the obstacle course, and that is a very unusual thing. Each event worth $8,000 to the winner. The loser comes up empty. We'll continue.